Hello, welcome to this video about installing DNN. Uh, in a previous video, if you haven't already set up your environment for a development environment, you should probably watch that one first. That will be linked in the description of this video for you, for your convenience. And so now we're going to go ahead with the, the installing of a, a DNN site in our development environment. Uh, some of the steps that we do will be things that you wouldn't want to do in production and I'll be highlighting those as well. So you're going to need a few different things. Uh, first, you're going to need a database for the website to talk to. You're also going to need a file system location where the website will be installed. And you're going to need to tie everything together with IIS um, as well as uh, having a local domain name. So the first thing we're going to do is give it a local domain name. I'm going to go to uh, Notepad. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to choose Run as Administrator. Uh, that's very important for this step because uh, the change we're about to make will not be able to be saved without it. So I'm going to choose to open a file. And I've already navigated there once. So if we, uh, we can see the path here that we need to go to, wherever Windows is installed, slash Windows, slash System32 drivers, etc. So this is the file path and this is going to allow us to open what's known as the host file to be able to specify local domain names or reroute DNS in general on our machine. So I'm going to switch to all files and now open our host files. So I can just double click on that bad boy and here we go. So what I'm going to do is copy this. If you're not aware already, 127.0.1 or .0.1 <laughs> Uh, that means localhost, so I can just post that here, and uh, I'm going to make a minor change to it though. I'm going to call this DNN972, um, so that's the version that we're going to install right now, and I just copied that. Um, so this, so when the request in a web browser goes to this domain name, it's going to know that that's supposed to be local, and it won't search for it. All right, so I just saved my changes which wouldn't again be possible unless we open that up in administrator mode. Next, I'm gonna uh, create a location for this to be in the file system. So because I'm on a cloud machine, uh, I'm gonna be installing in a slightly different area than you might be doing on your own laptop. Um, so I'm going to create a web folder here. So this presumably will be where I put all of my development websites. And now I'm going to create another one, uh, another nested folder here, and I'm going to call this one localhost.dnn972. And in here, I'm going to create a nested website folder. And the reason I'm doing this is I'm going to install into that website folder, but uh, if I actually turn this into a development website, uh, I might need to have additional folders and files here, so I don't have to put that in the web folder. I have a nested area or location to do that here. Um, so that, that includes, you know, tasks like, you know, connecting Git and things like that. So now we have our location where DNN will be installed. <clears throat> Next, I'm going to create a database. So I'm going to need to open up SQL Server Management Studio. There we go. I'll just connect to my local instance here. And we'll want to create a database. So I'm going to right click on databases, choose new database, and I'm going to call this um, uh, DNN972. Uh, so I'm keeping a naming convention so I know you know what folders match up with which objects and other areas of the system. So um, there's not really anything to be done in almost any uh, case so I'm just typing in a name clicking OK. Now I want to give it a login. Uh, so I tend to use the same development login or the same login uh, credentials on a development machine for all of my development websites. Uh, that primarily, the, the reason for that is uh, to have one less thing to troubleshoot when things go wrong. So I'm going to choose new login. I'm gonna call this UV user for up into ventures user. I'm going to choose SQL Server authentication and put in my development password. And uncheck enforce password policy because I'm using an insecure uh, password and login combination, or less secure, I should say. Uh, and it, again, a development uh, or any environment that presumably is in any way public, you'll definitely want to have a more secure login uh, pattern here, including enforcing the password policy. 
So from here, I'm going to go to also user mapping before I save my change. So I'm going to go to user mapping. I'm going to choose the database I just created for DNN and tick the check mark next to it, or a checkbox rather. And then I want it to have DB owner. Uh, uh, I need it to be a member of the DB owner schema. So I check those. I've uh, now I'm going to click OK. And now the database is all set up and ready for us. Next, I'm going to need to uh, open up IIS. So we're going to grab IIS by typing in IIS. And we don't have any sites installed in here yet, but the first thing I usually do in most development machines is I stop the default website. Uh, so again, to prevent any troubleshooting issues that may occur, uh, that thing won't get in the way anymore. Now I'm going to right click on sites to add a new website and then paste in the domain that we uh, put into the host file. And then we can browse for where this uh, website's being hosted from. So we're going to the D uh, drive in this case and localhost website. There we go. Now on my development machines, I tend to run all of my websites from the same application pool. And once again, that's just to rule out yet one more thing that could get in the way of troubleshooting, right? So I'm gonna use the default app pool. There we go, and then I can click OK. Now if I go look at the application pools, uh, we can see the default app pools here. Uh, the defaults are good for the most part. So we can see that it's uh, version 4.0, uh, which is what we want, and the integrated pipeline, again, what we want. Well, we may or may not change application pool identity later to be network service. You may see some uh, documentation out there saying to use that. Uh, that really depends on your development environment and how it's been configured, uh, depending on the order of uh, how you install the prerequisites uh, to run an ASP.NET website. Uh, application pool identity sometimes is less useful than uh, the network services username. All right, so we're, we're going to come back to permissions in just a moment. Now, uh, we have our website folder, but we don't have DNN. So let's go ahead and find DNN when you want, we'll want to download that. So I'm going to say download DNN platform for my search. There we go. So there's a number of ways we can get to it. Uh, so the end, uh, the end goal is to get to actually here, uh, GitHub uh, platform releases. Uh, we can also go to dnncommunity.org. This is the official website for DNN platform. And if we go under how to, we can see download and install, and we can uh, see some written instructions for what you're actually viewing right now, uh, including uh, downloading DNN. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and come over here to releases. Actually, I should probably just start. If you end up here, this is the actual landing page for where the open source uh, platform uh, is, is hosted for source control. To get to releases, there's a releases link on the right. So we get to releases here. The top one is 9.8.0, but remember we're installing 9.7.2 right now, and that's because in a, uh, the next video, I'm gonna show you how to upgrade to 9.8.0. So I'm going to go to 9.7.2, there it is. So I could have scrolled down to that, uh, but here it is, it's an actual release. And if I scroll down to assets, we're going to download the install package. Uh, deploy is used for web deploy, so almost everybody doesn't need that. Um, the symbols uh, package is great for troubleshooting if you need to troubleshoot exceptions that the core is throwing at you uh, to get to more detailed information in the event logs. And then the upgrade package is to upgrade DNN, so we'll be looking at that in the next video. So I'm going to just download this. All right, so that downloaded. Now that downloaded to my um, downloads folder. And so this, is, this next step is very important. We'll want to right click on this and go to properties and choose to unblock this folder, um, or excuse me, this zip file. And that's very important because if you don't do that, uh, the installation is almost certainly going to fail. Uh, some of the files just get blocked. So we're gonna click OK. And now that we have that, we're going to open it. I'm just using the Windows extraction tool uh, because this is a brand new machine, haven't installed anything except what is absolutely needed. So I'm going to just drop those files right into uh, the website folder so it's extracting right now. There we go. 
And the last thing we want to do is uh, set permissions. So I'm going to right click on the website folder, go to properties, go to security, and I want to go to advanced. Now from here, I want to disable inheritance. Um, and the reason we're doing this is we want to set up specific permissions for the DNN website. Um, and we don't want Windows to change that in the future. So I'm going to disable inheritance and we want to convert inherited permissions. There we go. And then we can go ahead and replace and click OK. So I check the checkbox for replace and then choose OK. Yes, I wish to continue. All right, but we're not done here yet. Uh, we'll want to at least add uh, ISI users. And so this is a built in account. Um, so I think I need to change the locations on my machine. There we go. So on some machines, you might have to do that. You want to point it at your local machine name. And so it's IIS underscore IUSRS, ISI users. So we're going to add that. And this is the user account that's used for anonymous viewing. So in some instances, if you're having issues with uh, JavaScript files loading or or images or CSS files, uh, it might be because ISI users is not getting served up. So I'm going to click OK or apply. OK. Um, the next thing is just in case, I'm going to go ahead and add the uh, network services account uh, just to prevent that from being an issue in a minute. Uh, so I don't mean to do that. Oh, quick root. Clicking too fast. All right. Network services and we can check names so it's network space services oops this is supposed to be service actually check name there we go and okay now this one will need to have full control or modify control either way uh, it'll uh, have the appropriate permissions so i'm going to click apply okay and i'm going to go through the extra step of coming in here uh, coming back into the advanced and I'm going to replace all child object permissions. So I'm explicitly telling it to uh, do it one more time. Um, the reason is on some machines, it, the permissions might not propagate fast enough and your, um, your install might fail. Okay. All right, so just to recap, we have went into our local uh, host file. We added the domain name that we want. We uh, created a database and added a user that can um, have the appropriate uh, permissions to create and, and modify the schema and, and so on. Uh, we've uh, pointed IS at the folder and uh, added the install files to the website folder. So everything's in place and now we can go ahead and try to run it and, and go through the install wizard. So I'm going to, uh, oops, yeah, that's fine. So I'm going to go ahead and type in uh, the local host. Actually, can I still paste it? I don't remember if I, yeah, there we go. Now, the reason I put HTTP in front of it is certain web browsers will first try to search for an object if they don't recognize that it has a top level domain, right? So, uh, so I put HTTP in front of it and now I'm going to hit enter. Now, uh, one thing to uh, point out is uh, for uh, those of us that have been installing DNN um, over time. Notice that this is taking a long time uh, for this first page load. Uh, that's good. <laughs> so when it when it when it uh, returns back to you fast, uh, that means that the uh, something's wrong. So after a few minutes, uh, I get this install configuration uh, error, and that's because we don't have the appropriate permissions. So it's great that we got that for this video. So I'm going to go back to our website folder. And we're going to go to properties for our permissions. Here's security. We already have network service here. Uh, if I go ahead and go edit, and we'll change our location again to be local. There we go. We can go ahead and go to advanced to see all the user accounts that are in here. And yeah, I don't see what we need here. So we're going to use network service. So a good thing is we already have the permissions in there. The next thing all we have to do is come into uh, the application pool and change application pool identity. Uh, so we're going to go to advanced settings and see it says application pool identity right here for the identity that it's using. So that's the user account. And we're going to use network service instead. All right. Now, in order for this uh, change to take 
uh, effect, we're going to need to recycle the application pool. So it's still highlighted here. Just click recycle and it'll recycle it. And so now I'm going to just start the request all over again. And it'll take just a, a couple minutes again. And here we go. So this is exactly what we wanted to see the first time. So we just have this one step left and then DNN does the rest for us. And uh, so we have a username, we can change that if we want. Uh, this is going to end up on production somewhere, probably want to do that. Um, but I'm just going to give it a password to be used. All right, so make sure they are the same. If you desire, you can change the email address. Uh, and then I'm gonna pretty much leave this all the defaults, but we can change the, the website name if we wish, but we can always do that later. Uh, the template, the, the default website template, will add a page that gives you uh, some helpful information about you know potential next steps and how to get help and, and whatnot. So you might want to leave that the way it is. And then finally, uh, the only other thing that we need to do is just make sure our database information is correct. So because we're not using SQL Server Express, we're using uh, actual SQL Server. I'm going to switch this to uh, SQL Server. And if you remember from the previous video, we have a named instance and we can tell that by coming over here into SQL Server Management Studio. And we can see the, uh, the machine name slash MS SQL 2019. So I have a named instance. And so I'm gonna come in here and, oops, accidentally hit something on the keyboard, there we go. MS SQL 2019, all right. And the database name, the database name is DNN 972. So I'm going to say DNN 972. And we did user uh, defined uh, login. So that was that UV user, if you remember. So I'm going to do UV user and then the password for it. And we're going to leave it ticked as database owner. Uh, you don't want to change that at all unless you uh, really know what you're doing. And then from there, we just click continue. So now it's being installed. So this uh, installation process generally on most of my machines takes a minute or two. Um, sometimes it'll run longer depending on if there's processes. I think I've seen it run as long as like four minutes or something, um, but it'll just take a moment. There we go. We can see it running through installing the packages and, and uh, it already got done with the SQL updates. And when you see creating my site, that's actually the final step. So it says 54% creating site and there we go, it's done. So that took 30 seconds, pretty awesome. Now we can visit the website. Now, just like our first uh, page load for the um, install wizard to get started, uh, this very first page load of running DNN will uh, take a moment as well. And boom, we have it installed. So we have DNN installed. Um, so we can see it's 972. You know, we can have all the benefits of uh, the content management system of, you know, editing content and, and adding modules and pages and so on. So that's all it is. That's uh, all you need to know for installing DNN. I hope you enjoy and uh, look forward to the next video where we're going to upgrade DNN. Have a good one.